Good morning. <clears throat> so I'm just pulling out of my neighborhood. Y'all don't worry. I am not going to be paying attention to the camera unless I'm in a light. But I wanted to hop on here for a few reasons. The first is to let y'all know that I'm going to start doing a Facebook, YouTube, Instagram live at 7 p.m. on Thursday. Um either 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Y'all tell me in the comments which is better, 6 or 7. I'm trying to lock in to at least that once a week, but I wanted to give y'all an update. I wanted to encourage your faith. I'm driving to the Home Depot. I have to get a lock box or a lock for our medicine cabinet because this morning at noon, our caseworker who is working our home study finally Praise the Lord, we've come to this phase, is coming to do a walkthrough of our house and meet and talk to Abigail Rose. So all of our paperwork is done, all of our paperwork is completed, all of our background checks are done, completed, approved. I actually have to go back and do, because it's taken so long, I have to go back and do, redo some of these state um, background checks. I haven't showered this morning. I'm going to do, do it when I get this stuff done because she's coming at noon. Okay. So that's an update. I'm going to be doing Thursday evening every week. I'm locking into that because Facebook isn't showing a lot of my um, lives when I come on live. <clears throat> and, you know, as you guys know, I haven't been doing them regularly and I'll be doing them throughout the week. But I wanted to lock into the Sunday service and the Thursday night so people could know that I'm coming on and as things move along I'll add more and more I want to pray with you guys more and stuff like that so I graduated college finally got my master's of Christian ministry graduated in May and was just trying to like process all that um, I feel like Abigail Rose I worked a lot of nights and my husband made a lot of sacrifices for me to go to school for those two years and some really crucial years of her life and you know um God just really was putting it on my heart to minister to my family over the summer then we got COVID uh that was you know I mean it wasn't like it was just the worst symptoms but my I've had some lingering COVID symptoms you guys pray for me um what they might call long COVID, and I'm not claiming that over myself. I'm praying over myself. I'm exercising, walking. I've had some lower back pain. I'm still coughing up phlegm some, and I'm sore all over. <laughs> but I might be so sore all over too, partially because I'm working out more now. Okay, into what you guys are probably on here for. Um, resist the devil at his onset. Okay, 1 Peter 5, 8 says um, to not be unaware of the enemy's schemes. And let's, let's see, how is this verse? 1 Peter 5, 8. Because um, the devil roams around like a roaring lion. I might be mixing verses here. But roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I'm at a light. There's a policeman right there. I probably shouldn't be doing a lot. I'm driving, but I'm like, if I'm going to do one, I got to fit it in somehow. And, um, then verse nine, it says, um, resist the devil. But if you study that out in like the original language, or maybe even if you read it in the Amplified Bible, it will say, resist the devil at his onset. When you are first getting attacked. I'm going to be talking more about demonic warfare and stuff. I've just come out of a season of heavy warfare, uh, spiritual warfare. <laughs> by the police. Okay, I'm not going to look at y'all. So, um, anyway, the enemy, let me just say this in case you didn't know. You don't have to be doing something wrong for the enemy to attack you. Okay? The enemy can attack anybody and will attack you if you're doing the right thing too. Now the Bible says if you submit yourself to God and you resist the devil, he will flee. But the Bible also says that Paul had a thorn in his flesh, which was a messenger from Satan, a demon. He had a 
demon that was attacking him and he prayed three times that it would be removed and the Lord said my grace is sufficient for you and so be careful judging other people who are under attack we got to fight for each other because sometimes you are under attack and you need other people to be praying for you other people to lift you up you know you might be under heavy attack on your mind and you know you feel like you can't even hardly pray <coughs> or worship you know or you just I don't know I'm sure most of you guys have had some kind of attack in your life and it might be circumstantial there were some things in your circumstances some people some problems some strife uh, you know financial crisis a crisis with your child you know what whatever it is um, just a great disappointment so it might have been something actually that was happening in your circumstance. Okay, I'm going to light again. And the devil comes in at those times. Even with Jesus, when he tempted Jesus in the in the um, desert, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. He knew what was coming. He was led by the Spirit into the desert to fast and pray. He knew what was coming. And the Satan himself came and tempted him. And he was a, he was a man... And he had the nature of God and a per, and he was a human. And Satan tried to tempt him to take what was his, rightfully his, without going through the suffering that he needed to go through in the will of God in order to help other people. And so, there's a temptation sometimes to give up. There's a temptation to sometimes to say, what's the use of this or what have you? But we got to remember as people of God, sons and daughters of the Most High God, what we're going through isn't just for us. And the enemy wants us to think, oh, well, we're not helping anybody. Nobody cares anyway. And, you know, but God has a plan and purpose for each one of us. And so we got to remember, we got to go through whatever fire, whatever trial, whatever circumstance the Lord is leading us to go through. No matter how difficult, no matter how hard, no matter the sacrifice. My husband was talking about this in church when he preached Sunday. In order to serve God, you are going to have to make sacrifices. I mean, I know that I walked into that fire of graduate school when my daughter was as young as she was and went through that for two years while trying to plant a church at the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it opened me up to all kinds of stuff. My insecurities came up, but I worked through a lot of that stuff. You know, I handled stress and some old patterns, gained a bunch of weight, which I'm losing now, praise the Lord. I'm, you know, I'm working it out. But, you know, sometimes you're not strong in your own strength. And you go through these things and... The Lord allows you to go through them, to lean on Him, to submit to Him, to not to try to do it on your own. And you're growing through those things. And you're learning how to battle the enemy in your own life. Because the more victory you get over the enemy, and you might have fought battles before, but you get into a next level and you're fighting different battles and you got different demons attacking you. Or, you know, it's a, a more opportune time for an old demon to come back around. Because they'll, you can overcome a demon... You can overcome a besetting sin. You can overcome, you know, a personality flaw or what have you. And then the circumstances get set up. The fire comes. <laughs> and, and, you know, that stuff flares back up. It's like if you've ever injured your hand, for instance. I used to carry my son Forrester around. I was 20 years old all the time. I got carpal tunnel in my, in my wrist. Well, recently, this has flared back up really bad. And I don't know. I'm going to go into the doctor because you can tell. You see this right here? Look at this. This is by far higher than that. It's like popped out. But anyway, it hurts. So I'm back on, I'm back into my wristband. And I don't know exactly what happened, what I did carrying my 50-pound daughter or what. Because um, it hurts. So you get re-injured sometimes in the place you've been injured before. And the enemy knows where your weak spots are. He knows where you have scars. He knows where you have weak spots. And he has had eternity, um, not eternity really, from the beginning of time to practice on hitting up humans. 
and he has studied your family, he has studied you, he has studied your past patterns, and you can walk, uh, overcome a victory at one level for a time, and God says it's time to come up higher, and he brings you in, God will set you up to fight battles, and like, the Christian life is not a playground, <laughs> it really is a battleground, and if you forget that, and you become unaware of Satan's schemes, you won't recognize his onset, and you'll be caught up, because it's happened to me a couple of times in my life, you will allow your mind to get caught up in a lie, to believe a lie, to meditate on a lie, to think that you're right in a lie, and if you begin to believe the devil's lies, he has got you, and he will attack your mind. He, he has mind, he has mind-numbing, mind control demonic spirits that will come in and attack your mind when you are exhausted, when you have stayed up late, when you are working, doing the will of the Father <laughs> and trying the best that you can. So don't ever judge, well, what'd you do? Why'd you get under a demonic attack? We need to, as the body of Christ, recognize we are in a battle and we're on the same team. <laughs> And our battle is not each other. We have a demonic uh, foe who battles against us to keep us, his plan is to keep us out of the will of the Father, to keep us from moving forward, to get us to give up and say, this is too hard, it's too much, I have failed, I have gotten, you know, whatever, this person is failing me, that person is failing me, just to get our eyes on the scene realm, get our eyes on other people, thinking they're the ones who are going to make it happen, thinks that they've got to change, they got to meet this need, this has got to happen in the natural, that, like to get us into our natural mind, so that we will not have spiritual insight into what is happening. I don't care how spiritual you are. This can happen to anybody. The Bible says, be careful when you think you stand, lest you fall. We got to walk carefully. We got, um, the Bible says, you know, um, that be careful because the days are evil. Live intentional every single day. Get up every single day. Don't wait till you are so far under attack. Don't wait till you have lost your stinking mind. <laughs> Don't wait until you're in divorce court or, you know, your kid is, you know, being arrested before you get on it. Like you, like your life depends on it. Get into the prayer. Get into the word. Meditate on the word. Battle in your mind. Don't just receive every thought that pops into your mind. A lot of the stuff Satan is telling us. A lot of the stuff he is telling us is the daggone truth of where he's taken us. But if we believe and put our faith in where he's taken us, that's where we're going. Yeah, okay. It might not work out the way that you think it is, but you got to think and hear from the Lord and get into the scripture and get the promises of God and hear from him for your life and believe where he is taking you. He will get you there. If you get in, if Jesus says, let's get in the boat and go to the other side, we're going to the other side, no matter the storm, no matter how desperate the situation, I'm in some desperate situations. Having believed the Lord and obeyed the Lord, you will find yourself in a storm, in the middle of a, uh, you know, a, a, a lake, a, a large lake, you might find yourself in the middle of a storm, in a large lake, going along with Jesus, with him seeming like he's asleep in the boat. Anybody else have this experience? Am I the only one who has obeyed God, stepped out in faith, and, and been taken right into the middle of the eye of the storm? Am I the only one? I know I'm not the only one. So, don't tell yourself, well, I listen to God, and then this happened. Well, I listen to God. Now, if you, you have to be careful with prophecy because we know in part we prophesy in part. So, if the Lord has promised to prosper us, and we follow the Lord and it brings us into a place where we are cut back, cut down, wondering how we are going to pay the bills. And we're like, why did you take me out of that job where I was making money? Why did you keep me from doing this, Lord? You know, like I listen to you 
and you led me into this lack in the enemy, the moment we start to doubt, and the moment we quit walking by faith and start walking by sight, the enemy will come in and mess with our minds. He will start, he will take that little thought. I mean, the moment that thought comes, every high and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God in our minds, we got to take that thought captive. Listen, I don't care what anybody says. You don't always, I know we hear glory to glory to glory. You know, there's no setback. There's no this, there's no that. You know, you're never going to, There's. it's always up, 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 up from here. Well, there's pruning. Sometimes God cuts us back to make us more fruitful. Sometimes God leads us through things that aren't even, you know, because of other people's choices. We have to go through some stuff. We have to put up with some things. And we aren't always in every season at all times. And it's going to make us crooked, lacking compassion Christians if we just believe that the blessing and the favor of the Lord always looks like Hollywood fame and fortune <laughs> and beauty. Like, we're getting older. We're getting wrinkles. You know, like, the, the, the reality of, the truth and the reality of we are fading away in our bodies. We're going to get new bodies. So, like, the whole concept that all of life is just always, you know, we're, we're just going to get younger as we grow. No, we're going to get older. And even though we get older, we're going to be stronger in our spirit. We are spiritual beings. And we got to understand spiritual things. And this is not to say that a, a season of cutback won't lead to a season of greater fruitfulness. Because I've seen that in my life time and time and time again. But if you don't understand the spiritual principles, the farming principles that Jesus talks about in the Word so, so often, you're going to get in one of those seasons where it is an opportunity to sow and an opportunity to grow and you are going to get discouraged and the enemy is going to come in and say, none of the stuff you are believing is real. The prophet said that this was your season. This was your abundant harvest. And how do we not know that that very moment in our life that is the hardest is the thing that is going to catapult us into the place where we are able to handle more and know how to defend ourselves and be on the offense and the defense against the devil when the the next release comes when the next tangible thing comes and we just got to get out of this looking at things as the world does it's an upside down kingdom it is an upside down kingdom. You might look like you're, you know, this is happening or that's happening. And things are falling apart. But the Lord is working. He is moving and he is training us in righteousness. He is training us. When you're under attack, the things that you thought mattered, what really matters when you were coming out and you are battling through, it comes into clarity. It comes into um, just a deeper understanding that being right with God and seeking his kingdom is where it is all about. And if those other things get added, great. <laughs> and they will, because the Bible says, seek first his righteousness and seek his kingdom. And all these things will be added as well. And when we go through those battles and things aren't turning out the way we want, we find out real quick what we were seeking. Because when we're depressed and we're miserable, when we've been seeking the righteousness and the kingdom of God and things aren't going our way, then chances are <laughs> our priorities were out. Our hope was in the wrong thing. Our hope was in a particular earthly outcome. And God is stripping us of those things. So the reason why is because Jesus said uh, when, when Peter stepped and tried to get him not to go to the cross, he said, get behind me, Satan. You know? <laughs> We got to be like that. No matter who it is, no matter, we're not going to give ourselves that kind of sympathy. Whatever we got to go through, we're doing the will of the Father. This is not about our earthly success. And, you know, I say this, God has called us to be faithful, not successful. He has called <laughs> And success, the way the kingdom looks, isn't the same the way the, the earth looks at success. And we are going to be way surprised at some of the people who are getting the most crowns in heaven. 
I think we're going to be shocked. I think we're going to be surprised. Because a lot of people are getting their rewards down here. I absolutely 100% believe and preach and talk and prophesy that, that God wants to shower us with abundant earthly provision to do his will. That's another talk. I'm talking to people who are going through something now who that reality seems so far away and the enemy is messing with your head. When you aren't aiming for that, the enemy cannot mess with your head. He cannot cause you to be fearful and greedy with your money. When your aim is not financial prosperity, there are people who think that the gospel of Jesus Christ is a way to get rich. The Bible says this. That is not the gospel. <laughs> it is not the gospel. That is a false gospel that is a you know, floating around in the church. If you are called to prosperity, and many, many, many people are in the church, I think God would prosper more people if he could trust more people <laughs> to do what they say. A lot of times, people, the, when you hit prosperity, pride comes, and then you're under Leviathan, and you could be a absolute, absolute havoc on the people around you, especially if you're in spiritual leadership. So prosperity can take a person down quick as anything if they haven't gone through the fire and been purified and got it in God's time, God's way, for God's purposes, in you know, in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe that God has a plan for America, prosper America, prosper American Christians to bring the gospel throughout the, the nations. I'm believing that for myself, so I'm not preaching against prosperity, but I'm not a prosperity preacher. And this isn't just about money. No matter what you were getting hit with, a lot of people's marriages are suffering simply because they have mind-twisting spirits that have come in through pride, that have come in through rejection issues, and are twisting things, are causing people to focus on the negative, are causing people to meditate on offense, are causing people not to humbly respond, react. And these spirits want to destroy our finances, our bodies, our marriages. I mean, my body has gotten hit <clears throat> really with weight gain. And you can say, well, that's your own fault. I'm telling you, anybody who struggle with their weight, I am not making excuses, but it is a spiritual, ba it is a spiritual battle the times when I have gained weight. I have been under spiritual attack, and um, that is just an area for me that I have been under attack before, and the enemy knows that. <coughs> you might have other ways, but like, the enemy will attack your physical body. He will try to get you to be unhealthy. He will, he will attack you with sickness. He will attack you with, you know, when he has tried everything else, when he attacks your body, anybody who struggle with pain, hurt, brokenness in their physical body, it, it, it puts you in a position of weakness for other attacks on your mind when you are in pain. It might be emotional pain. He will attack your marriage. If he cannot get you to disobey him, he will get the people that you love to disobey him and to attack you with the words of their mouth, with the responses that they have. But the Lord is saying, I want you to resist the devil at his onset. I want you to be so prayed up. I want you to fast. I want you to pray. I want you to read the word. I want you to be singing. I want you to be praising. I mean, pray in the spirit. I, I went to Tennessee. I prayed in the spirit and prayed and battled all the way there and all the way back. <laughs> I mean, when you were in the car... I don't care the person or not. I'm like, God, I mean, I'll go at it when I'm in the car. People are like, they probably think I'm singing rap. And I just do, I just, if I am not doing this consistently, I fall underneath the attacks of the enemy. Like, I don't know if, and it could be because I'm apostolically plowing in this region to plant a church and to, um, you know, really infect this region with the whole, the gospel of Jesus Christ and, 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 you know, some new demons have been aware of me, some things that God has had us doing in DC and, you know, just some spiritual, some battles 
And so if God's called you to major battles, you better be majorly praying because you get up into these next level responsibilities, next level assignments, and you try to play with last level <laughs> prayers and you're going down. <laughs> so you got, got to get people praying around. You got to pray. Um, I've been doing a prayer call with my church and I thought, I wonder if some people would like to get on a prayer call. And I thought, well, I'll just get online and do prayers more. But Thursday I'm going to be on. I got to go in the Home Depot because... We have a home study today at noon. Y'all pray for me. She's coming to meet Abigail Rose, our caseworker. I had my one-on-one -on -one meeting yesterday. Me and Dave had our um, marriage meeting on Friday. Dave has his one-on-one -on -one meeting August 8th. Then we have one more couple meeting, and then they can, they're going to uh, have some meetings with references for us, and then they're going to wrap up our home study. We could get this thing going. <sighs> okay. I love you guys. I pray the blessing of the Lord, peace of God that transcends all understanding to be on your lives. You have authority over the enemy. The enemy is a liar. <laughs> the enemy is a liar. Pray till you have peace. Pray until you got peace. And the fact of the matter is, you might have had anxiety for six weeks, six months. And you know, you already know, because you've been praying, that your 10 minutes or 15 minutes of morning prayer isn't cutting it. So you got to pray without ceasing. You got to do the dishes like telling the devil where to go, calling down the fire of heaven over your life, the Holy Spirit to fill every nook and cranny of your soul, your husband's soul, your kid's soul. I mean, go, it's, 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 you got to battle. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I haven't been doing as many lives. I have been battling. <laughs> And I know, I'm not putting another thing under my plate. You know, I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit here. And no matter how it affects my life, God's going to bring me through. I'm, I'm not getting on here. And, the, you know, I'm not getting on here just because I'm trying to, like, you know, a ministry rat race kind of thing where I'm supposed to do this or that. That's one of the things. Like, I never intended. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I love you guys.